Jesus, we are here for you this morning. We are here because of you this morning. May you be praised, may you be worshipped, may you be blessed by the things that we do this morning in your name. Father, as always, we thank you that you've provided this place for us, that we can come and worship you, Father, that your gifts, your graces, your mercies are new every day, Father, that uh, even through this last week, those that have struggled, Father, they can come to you this morning with with their sin, with their shame, with their suffering, Father, they can give it to you. They can ask for forgiveness, and you remove those things from us. Father, you restore the relationship between us. So, Father, we, we ask for that this morning, that, that the sins that we bring you this morning, Father, would you forgive us? Father, would you restore our relationship so that it is right and new again, so that we can hear from you this morning, Father God? Because when we're living our own lives, Father, and we're, we're rebelling against you by not obeying, Father, I know that our hand is put up to you, Father, and we are unable to hear from you. So, Father, once again, we'd ask, as everyone lays down what's ever in between us and you, Father God, that you would forgive us, that you would break down these walls, Holy Spirit, that you would draw us close this morning so that we could truly hear from our Father this morning, that, that the words of our Father would drown out the noise of the world. Father, we love you. We thank you. As always, we pray for those who can't be here this morning. We pray for those that are maybe watching online from another country, even perhaps. Father God, this morning, may your blessings just be all over our brothers and sisters. And as always, we'd ask, Lord, that you would speak through Pastor Chuck this morning, that they not be his words, Father, but your words speaking through him. Holy Spirit, would you do your work? We pray all this in the name of Jesus. The church said, amen. 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 Good morning. Turn around. Wave. Say hi to somebody you haven't said hi to yet. Good morning. Can you hear me? Am I on? Oh, there I go. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. You're welcome. You are one of the prettiest mothers I've ever seen. (laughs) Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm up here this morning just to talk a little bit about the CareNet fundraiser that we are going to participate in again this year. Um, CareNet is a really great organization. They're based out of Missoula, and they are kind of the local umbrella organization to LifeNet, which is a national organization. Um, They provide support to um, women and men that are dealing with unplanned pregnancy. They are a Christian-based organization, so they are providing support to combat against the alternative of abortion. Um, They provide a lot of great resources. Um, They do STD, STI testing. They do um, 
all sorts of different, you know, healthcare education for new families, new mothers. They do um, education on parenting. They provide a lot of emo emotional support, and then they provide actual physical things that new parents might need, um, diapers, clothes. There's a lot of things that a, a new parent needs to take care of their child, and it's especially overwhelming to those who maybe aren't prepared or planning for that. Um, what they do, this is kind of a fun fundraiser that they do every year. It's called their Baby Bottle Boomerang, and it runs from Mother's Day through Father's Day. And out in the foyer, there is a table set up with baby bottles. If you feel like you want to participate, you can grab one of those and fill it up with um, change, cash, a check, whatever you feel necessary, and then just bring it back before um, Father's Day. There is going to be a bin out in the foyer as well where you can drop those full baby bottles once you have them filled, and yeah, that's the gist of it. You can also go online and donate to them at any time online. There's some brochures out there um, with their website as well. It's very, very detailed in all the resources that they provide, and also um, support that they might need volunteer-wise. They really, they're a nonprofit organization, and so they run bare bones, and they can use a lot of volunteer support as well. So if you don't feel like you want to support them financially, then maybe you feel like you want to so um, donate a little bit of your time to them. But if you have questions, you can come talk to me or check out their information. Thank you. For the moms who raised us up, gave us love, and made us strong. For the praying moms, don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost, but never given up. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had the single moms who tirelessly and courageously learned how to do this on their own. For the stepmoms and the stand-in moms who rose to the occasion and loved us well. For the working moms, the stay-home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms, thank you. For teaching us how to walk, how to learn, and how to make a difference for taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself, for comforting us when we felt alone and afraid, for lifting us up when others put us down, for the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties, for the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we wanna say thank you. doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. We love you. We honor you. We remember you today. Happy Mother's Day. my sad, teary emotions going. Oh my goodness. I know, me, about to cry, go figure. Um, seriously, what else can I say after that? That was wonderful because I know my own mother. I hope you're watching, Mama, because I love you very much and happy Mother's Day. Um, sorry. 
but happy Mother's Day to you all. Let's lift this up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Woo! <laughs> I just had to work through something there real quick. Um, to the biological moms, to the adoptive moms, to the foster moms, and foster means so much. Fur baby moms, to the single moms, the waiting moms, and the stepmoms, and the spiritual moms, and the grieving moms. Happy Mother's Day from us. Um, I know dad jokes are kind of the thing right now, but dads really aren't as funny as moms. <laughs> Can I get a whoop whoop there, please? Thank you. My daughter reads me dad jokes every day, and unfortunately, I'm the one that got it for her for Christmas, a calendar, so I hear them every day, but, but moms are funny, too. Yes, we are. So I have a couple of um, little silly jokes, and that's why I had to lighten the mood, because they're silly. So um, <clears throat> mom, seriously, never be hard on yourself. E.T.'s mom had an alien in her house for, year, for weeks, and she had no idea. So never be too hard on yourself. Good moms let their kids lick the beaters. Great moms turn it off first. <laughs> um, uh, I don't like it when I'm waiting for mom to cook dinner. And then I realize, oh, wait, I am mom. So I better get to it. Um, nothing, and this, this is so, so true. Nothing is truly lost until mom can't find it. Then it's lost. And kids, to the kids. Mom doesn't have a favorite child. They all annoy us equally. And here's my favorite. What's the fastest land animal? Mammal. A toddler who you've asked, what's in your mouth? <laughs> so, thank you. Those were, I thought those were pretty fun. <laughs> but with all of that silliness, please remember you moms are worthy. And God looks, looks at you with the utmost of love and tenderness and compassion that he can have. He loves you very much. And you are loved by Cornerstone Church. And because um, we hold you moms to such high regard, we would like for you guys to pick a Dahlia after the service to take home. And, and oh, oh, wait, that's more nurturing and more taking care of. <laughs> Sorry about that. But what? <laughs> I, know, I know. Never mind. We'll give those to the boys so they can understand how that works. No, seriously, we all love you very much. Happy Mother's Day. How's everybody doing? Great. Yeah, good. Is this thing on? No. Nope. Nope. Are you serious? <laughs> I have a 50 50 chance, and I thought I nailed it today. <laughs> Dang it all, straight to heck. <sighs> yeah, that's right. It's <laughs> or a Brent in the back going. <laughs> Welcome to Cornerstone Church. <laughs> If you're a visitor here today, that's how we roll. That's what we do. I know why they don't make those cheesy, mushy, squishy, lovey-dovey videos for Father's Day. Because there would be too many dads crying. So, thank you, mothers. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. And thank you for all that you do that you don't get thanked for. Um, truly, truly appreciate you, you mothers. Um, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we're going to be talking about love today. Um, you know, there is something about a mother's love, isn't there, that, that just brings comfort, um, peace, safety, that, that feeling of a, a calmness that comes when mom shows up to the room or gives that hug. Um, dads do have a special kind of love as well. Um, we are tender. We are cuddly. Yes. yes. 
We are compassionate. When dads show up, there is a sense of security as well, um, safety. Um, and it's just that, that thing about regardless of who shows up, whether it's mom or dad, it, when they show up in love, there's just something that just puts us all at ease and comforts us. Amen? It doesn't matter. The, the fact that somebody has arrived and you are in their care um, is, is a beautiful thing, especially when they show up in love and take care of us. Today we're going to be looking at what the Bible says about love, and my prayer is that you would leave here today um, not only armed with an answer of what love is, but a motivation to demonstrate love to others around the world. Um, that you not only can explain what biblical love is, but that you can show it as well. And the, the title of the message today is, This is Love. Because love comes in many forms, it comes through many means, but there is an underlying source that, that, that love springs from, and that is our proper understanding of God's love for each of us. When we understand that, then we can truly, deeply love others, because it's the Father's love. Before we get into our study, let's go to prayer. Lord, we just lift you on high, we magnify you, we thank you so much for being in our lives and the love that you've bestowed upon us. Father, we pray for every mom uh, that, is, that, is, that is out there, that, Lord, you would uh, just anoint them and bless them today, comfort them. Um, I know that moms have, have children that have, are moving away. I, have, I know moms that have, have lost their children, and, and there's a, just a passionate, deep love. They watch them graduate. They watch them just go through life, and there's always the concern. And, Lord, you have that same love for us as you watch us go through life. And so, Father, we thank you so much. Father, for those that can't be here, I know that there are some recovering from surgeries and that are healing, some that aren't feeling well. Father, we ask you to, to be with them and bless them. For those that are joining us online, possibly even uh, overseas in Pakistan and Italy um, and around the world, Father, we just thank you for, for those that are, are able to be a part of our online family. We ask that you would touch them and bless them where they're at as well. Father, speak to us today in the word. Lord, I ask that, that I would move to the background. You come to the foreground and that your word would be spoken today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So what does love look like? As I said, it can be expressed in many ways, many means, but love is an action, is it not? Come on. Love is birthed out of a proper mindset, though, of how God loves us. See, love is intentional. Love is deliberate. Love is sacrificial, and we see that demonstrated by God throughout Scripture in our lives. The Bible has a great definition of love, and many of you are going, I know exactly where this is going. And, and so there's also a number of examples, but if you have your Bibles with you here today, turn to 1 Corinthians 13. And I want to encourage you, if you have your Bible, whether it's a paper copy or a digital copy, open it to, to 13 and follow along, 1 Corinthians 13. If you have a Bible at home, bring it. Get to know it. So in your time of need, you can use it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at, at a definition given to us of what love is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning in verse 4. It says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So what is love? Love is an action that is patient, it is kind, and it is able to rejoice with truth. Amen? It bears, it believes, it hopes, it endures for the good things in life and the good things in others. What it doesn't do is it does not tear down. Love is not self-seeking. Love builds up, and this is love. The irony of this passage that we read is that it is sandwiched in between two chapters that speak about the spiritual gifts within the church. And, and it's a reminder to those in the church and us today not to abuse the spiritual gifts of the Lord, but to, to let love govern our lives as we use those gifts. Why does God give spiritual gifts? It is to glorify him through us using them. Amen? Amen. Not that we become puffed up, proud, arrogant, right? And we think we're better than we are. No, it's rather that we would become charitable, more charitable, more compassionate, more humble as a result of having these gifts that we get to show people who the Lord is. When we place the needs of others before ourselves, how we love others reflects the love that we have for not only God, but others as well in our own lives. 
Turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, starting at verse 7, says this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has, not, has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his Son, only Son, into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. And if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. See, when, when we love in a godly way, people get to see the invisible God in us. Come on, when we show it, it reveals God to them. When we go to them and love them in their most broken moments, in their most worthless moments, when they're just like, I don't deserve this, and we come alongside in love and say, you are an image bearer of God Almighty. You deserve the love. You deserve the respect of a child of God, and I am here to give it to you in love. They see that. It reveals that God lives in us. He abides in us. It reveals our love for God and our understanding of how much he loved us. And so by that measure, it motivates us to action, to go and love others. How are we to love? Sacrificial, sa whew, sacrificially. Say that three times fast. I can't. We, we love sacrificially the way that God loved us. We love uh, in, in a way that doesn't make sense. God sent his son to die for mankind. In our lives today, that would not make any sense, to send our child to die on the behalf of others that are going to reject them. For us, it would be an all or nothing some issue. But he, God came and Jesus came and died for people who were going to reject him. We're to love people the way Jesus did, even when they reject us. In John chapter 1, keep your finger in First John, we're going to come back to it. But in John chapter 1, we see this testament that Jesus was even rejected when he came to love his own people. It says he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. It's like, wow. He came specifically for people to love them and they rejected him. And he loved them nonetheless. Go back to 1 John 4. We're going to read verse 18 and 19 together. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. That's verse 20, which we didn't have up. See, we are free to love others. And how we love others shares our testimony. We should not have fear in loving someone. We shouldn't. Loving someone that Jesus died for is what we're called to do. And there should be no fear in loving others simply because we're called to do it. He's given us the license and the freedom to do so. And so when, when people ask, why do you treat others so well? How can you love others so well? Our simple answer is we love them because Jesus loved us first. And it's like, what, what can people say against you loving someone? <laughs> Think about it. When you're constantly generous, always giving, always giving consideration, always giving a benefit of, it, of the doubt, what can people say against that? Right? They're going to say, you're crazy. They're going to say, that person doesn't deserve that. Or you're wasting your time even. Right? We've heard all these things. I want to tell you that, that loving others can be crazy at times. It doesn't make sense to go and go and go and give and give and give the benefit of the doubt. Even when you know they're wrong, you still love them where they're at. It doesn't make sense. Yes, that is crazy. But that's love. You know, People that we love sometimes don't deserve it. I know when I make Tara angry, I don't deserve the love that she showers upon me. <laughs> you didn't have to laugh and 
That wasn't an amen moment. Like, hallelujah. You know, it's like, but it's one of those things where it's like, we don't. When we're in the wrong, we don't. But that's the beautiful thing about love is you give it anyway. And I want to say this, that loving others is never, 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 ever a waste of time. You cannot go wrong by loving your fellow man. How cool would this be? This would be an amazing compliment. Imagine you're just bebopping, loving people, doing what you do because that's who you are, and, and it's not fake, and it's not phony, and you just love, 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 and somebody goes, man, I could not love people the way you love people. What a testament it is to the living God inside of you because in that moment, we get to say, you know what? It's, it's not me. It's God in me. That, that, that allows me and gives me the license and liberty to love others. It's like, man, when people can see that, that is the evidence of our love for God in our lives. God loved everyone, and so should we. It's that simple. It really is. And it's hard. It's hard to love someone when they just, just cut you off in traffic, when they just didn't do what you asked them to do two seconds ago, Right? Parents are like, your mom's like, amen to that today, especially, you know, when you tell your kid, go clean your room, and they're off playing, doing whatever, and you're like, Arr! but you still love them in the moment, because they're tender, and they're going to come around someday, and you love them through the trial, right? We do this, we do this, this is what we're called to do, and it's hard to love in the heat of the moment, but here's the thing, in, in spite of their shortcomings, in spite of the failures of others, in spite of what they may have done to us, it doesn't matter. We love them still. Why? Because Jesus loved us in spite of our sins and our failures. And he still does. Amen? Come on. We are to love others the way that Jesus loved. And we need to be quick to remember that. We need to be quick to remember the command of Jesus found in Matthew 5. Matthew 5, verse 38. Talks about love. Matthew 5, verse 38, he says, Have you have heard that it was said, uh, and oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong place. 43, not 38. You've heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Uh, do not even the Gentiles do the same. You, therefore, must be perfect as your Father or Heavenly Father is perfect. God is love, is He not? And He is perfect, is He not? Come on, we're commanded and called to, to be perfect in our love like our Father is perfect. That is hard and that is sacrificial, and that is always going. We never get to stop loving. We never get to say that's enough. Like how many times are we placing conditions on who we love, how we'll love them, and to what measure we will love? And the question is, is did God withhold love from his enemies? Did God withhold love from you, who was an enemy of his before coming to faith in Christ? And the answer is no. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5. In Romans 5, and we're going to start in verse 8. Romans 5, 8 through 10, it says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Sounds like God held back a little bit, didn't it? You, know, you could kill Jesus just, a, just that far and that's it. No, he went the whole way. He gave us all the love. God did not withhold any love from anyone, and we are commanded to do the same thing, even when we didn't deserve it. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us while we were hostile towards him. First, or Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, we see this. 
starting in verse 21. It says, and you who were once alienated and what? Hostile and what? Mind, doing evil deeds. He is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach. We were enemies of God, where? In our minds, in our hearts, by our evil deeds and the things we said and did. And yet... Jesus came along. He sent his son in love to reconcile us back to him, which is this new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that every week at communion. That's what we're celebrating. We are celebrating what Christ did for our sake and for our salvation. God demonstrated what love looks like. And it came at the death of his son. He paid it all. And we're called to imitate that kind of love towards others. Turn with me to John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 35 tells us this. This is how people are going to know who we are. John chapter 13, verse 35 says this. By this, what's this? It's love. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Do people look at you walking by and going about your life and go, ah, there goes a disciple of Jesus Christ. And people go, how do you know? Well, look at how they love. Say, like, how cool would that be if that was what was said about you when, when you left the room? There goes a disciple of Jesus Christ. You can tell by how they love. See, this is love. As believers, this is real love. This is true love. This is godly love. When this passage is written, it is written about Jesus saying, hey, the world will see how you treat each other as my followers. And when they see that kind of love, they will know that you're my disciples. Why? Because how many times do we step on each other's toes? How many times do we offend each other? How many times do we bicker and argue over carpets, colors, and chairs, and this, and paint on a wall, and, and it, I didn't get my way, so I'm going to hurrah, 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 right? We can be, that's why the world hates the church, is they see that. But Jesus is like, when you guys will truly love beyond that, through that, the world will see that you're my followers. See, we have every opportunity to become offended when somebody comes and holds us accountable, Right? When they start reading your mail to you and say, you know what, that's not, that's not what this says. And you said you're a follower of Jesus Christ. And so I'm holding you to this standard. Let us pray and work through this thing together. Right? We have every opportunity to get upset when someone comes at us and it doesn't seem very lovingly. And, and they give us a word of correction or a rebuke. And we're like, mind your own business. It's like, Ooh, stop. Right? We have every opportunity but here's the thing, when our love prevents us from taking offense, from realizing that it was probably harder for that person to come to us to say those words than it is for us to hear it, we can in love say, thank you for having the courage to come and say that to me. We can now demonstrate love and refuse to take offense. We say, no, I'm not giving Satan a toehold in my life on this. And when the world sees that, they see true love. They see God's love in us pointing to him. When they see that, they see that they, we have something that they don't. And when we love the world like that, that kind of love draws people. And where are we drawing them to? Not to the building, right? Not to a social club, right? No, to the kingdom of God. We're pointing them to Jesus when we love like that. Amen? And when they ask, how do you love like that? Our simple answer is that that's because that's the way Jesus loved. That's the way he loved me. And now I have opportunity to share that love with you. What a beautiful thing to be able to say to someone who's coming at you with hostility and anger and you refuse to receive it because of love. Love covers a multitude of sins, does it not? Loving others can be hard. It really can. And it's so hard that that's where Jesus told us over and over and over in his word, hey, you need to pick up your cross and carry it. You need to die to yourself, right? Do not, do not give any room for anybody to offend you. Die to yourself. Focus on me. Follow me. Don't be distracted by the cares of the world. Follow the Savior. Amen? Yeah. Keep your eyes on him. And so we have to die to ourselves in order to love others properly. And I would go so far as to say this. 
And, and if you get offended, that's between you and God. That's all I'm going to say with this. But your fulfillment of the Great Commission is a reflection of your love, not only for others, but your love for the Lord as well. If you don't love others the way that Christ showed us and the Bible instructs us, then the gospel will never get shared. People will never get baptized. And there will be people that have not been taught to obey everything that Christ commanded. If we truly love God, we will love his people that he died for, and we will follow the great commission that he has given us. Amen? The great commission is G-O. Go. Not N-O. No. I ain't doing that. I ain't talking to that person. I'm not serving that way. No, I, I've got my stuff I got to do, Lord. When's my stuff going to get, hey, he's like, I, what, what? Like, God cares about that. He's like, go love. That's all we're called to do. Let's not get caught up in our own selves. Let's, let us be obedient to the Lord. If you view the Great Commission as something that you have to do, like, it's begrudging. It's like, right now, you're like, I can't believe he's talking about that commission thing again. Like, it's a command that we've been given by our Lord and Savior. If, if, that, if it grieves you to know that that's what you're called to do, I want to encourage you, spend some time at the foot of the cross today. Spend time there. and Talk to Jesus about this great commission that he's called us to do and, and how you don't think you, you need to be obligated to it. You need to get right with the Lord on this. Because here's the thing, is the great commission is fulfilled because of our love for others. I want to encourage you. To remember that Christ paid a great price for all of mankind. To reconcile us. And you were a recipient of that love. And as a result of that, we should be shouting that from the mountaintops. Should we not? Come on. Thank you. It's like, we are saved. We're going to heaven. Are we not happy about that? Yeah. Oh, it's like, like, man, that should, that should start our whole day off every morning. Get out of bed. I'm going to heaven, baby. Woo! And you just walk out the door and you just take that energy with you and you just bless everybody you come into contact with from the coffee shop to the grocery store to the grouch at the workplace or your school. You love them. Why? I'm going to heaven. You want to join me? There should be a joy of the Lord that consumes us and moves us. And it's all growth. I mean, it's all, it's all produced from love. Amen? Amen? Come on. Let me put it this way. You don't buy a dream car to stick it in a garage so nobody can ever see it, use it, or smell it, or, or anything, do you? Some people might, and we'll pray for you. <laughs> if that's you, you're how the other half lives, and that's all right, but that's good. But it's like, what's the value of that car if nobody sees it? What's the purpose and the point of owning it if you never drive it, right? And are you ashamed of that car? Is that why you're hiding it? No. It's like we're not ashamed of our new cars, right? In fact, we might even roll down the window and do a little lean. Let that get the wind in the hair. Like, you're right? Like, I got my new car. You're not embarrassed, right? So it's like, man, you might even pull up to the stop sign and you, like, you got the radio up a little bit louder. Sorry, Jesse and Mark. It's all good. <laughs> if you're going if you're gonna go there, um, I'm good. Jesus loves you. Love me for saying that. But, uh, but it's one of those things, it's like, man, you might turn the radio up a little like, extra loud. So why? So people see your new car, yeah. right? If you have a gas-operated car and not electrical, you can do this. Run, 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 hit that gas pedal, right? Get that engine revving where you're like, oh, sorry, my new car. I haven't figured out the, how that all works yet, but it's brand new, so I'm digging it, and I'm glad you saw me in it, right? <laughs> we don't stick it in a garage for nothing, like we, we, when we have good things happen in our life, when, when good things come about us, we share them. Do we not? Amen. And we might not share it with everybody, but we're sharing it with somebody. We, how many people do you annoy with? Would you annoy with that new car? Right? Beep beep. Look at my new car. Beep beep. You're that person that parks and like takes up the two parking spaces, the <laughs> diagonal parker. Forget about it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> they need grace too. They do, but it's like, there's your new car, right? We do that. Why? Because it's valuable. We show it. We share it. We enjoy it. We get out and, and ride around in it. How much more valuable is our salvation? The fact that we're going to heaven, that we should share it with someone. Turn with me to Romans chapter, chapter 1. I don't know what that is. 
Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Some people like the smell of a new car. That's all there is to it. All right. Romans 1, verse 16. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Like, are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you ashamed that you're saved? Are you ashamed that you're going to heaven? And I would be willing to bet, no. All of us would say, no, absolutely not. I am not ashamed of my Lord and Savior. And so I would encourage you then to go out in love and share that with the world around you. Share it in your schools, share it in your workplaces, share it wherever you're at. Pray for the person that's serving you your meal when you go out to lunch and celebrate Mother's Day today and say, hey, God loves you, I love you. Can we pray for you about anything? See what that'll do in someone's life. Go and love and share this great message. Fulfill an aspect, some aspect, you don't have to do it all. Fill some aspect of the Great Commission. That's where it's the body of Christ. We come alongside and we can fulfill this together as well. And you do so because you realize how much Jesus loved you, that you're willing to, to just go and love somebody where they're at. When you realize, Jesus pulled me out of my muck and my mire and the, ugh, and the garbage and the filth of my life, and I'm so happy for that, that it just, you were so caught up in, in the love of that and, and how wonderful that is, that it's like you see the person in the same condition you were in, and you're like, I, I just, I can't bear to see you in that position. I can't bear to see you in that place. Allow me to lovingly help you out of it. Amen? And we go alongside and we just share the gospel with these people. We help them and meet them where they're at, not casting judgment, but going in love and saying, simply because I love you, I want to do this. There's no payback. There's no obligations. I love you. Allow me to help you. hard to imagine people just walk by and discard people. Everybody deserves love. Everybody deserves love. Even your enemies. Even your enemies. I'll say it again. Yes, those that get on your last nerve need to hear the gospel from you. And not like, oh, you need Jesus. Not, 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 not condescending. <laughs> like, oh, I, oh, I'll pray for you. Right? No, it's like, man, no, that, that's not the gospel. That is, that is not the gospel. Go to them in love and share what Jesus has done for you. Share what he's done for the world. Share what he wants to do for them. That is the gospel. And you go and do it in love. In love. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. In verse 27. I love God's word. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 31. He says, but I say to you who hear, uh-oh. Everybody go like this. Your ears out? You clean? You good? I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, to the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either, Give to everyone who begs from you, and from the one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, so do to them. That takes love. That takes a special kind of love. To where you can let that, if, if you understand that's all God's anyway, they needed it more than I did. And you can say that in love and just release whatever that stuff is in love. That's a special kind of love that the world will not understand when, when they see you being taken advantage of, but in love, you're generous, you're gracious, and you're forgiving. It's a love that they don't demonstrate because love costs. Love costs. There's a sacrifice when it comes to loving others, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it, and we're commanded to do it. I'll close with this. You know, loving God, serving uh, people, and, and, and becoming family. That's not just a cool sign on the door when you walk in, right? That is who we are. 
That is what we are at this church. We love God. We serve people. We become family. Because we believe that when, when we love God, when we understand his love for us, we will be compelled to go and love and serve and meet the needs of others. And when we go and serve and meet the needs of others, that they will want to become a part of this family. Not just Cornerstone Church, but I'm saying the family of Christ, the body of Christ. They will want to be believers because someone loved them where they were at. Amen? It's not just a tagline for us to do. It's, it's who we are, and it's our way of life. And I hear over and over and over, and even Pastor Daryl and, and his, his, his buddy Gordon, who was with them, their testament to this church is, man, we felt so loved coming in here. And we hear that from all kinds. Many of you, all of you, are a testament to that, that have come into this place and got mauled by Nick Hunter, who gave you a big bear hug, and said, I love you, welcome to Cornerstone Church, and you've stuck around. I tell you, he was the first guy I walked into when I came into this church, and, and it got me around the arms to where all I could do is that kind of <laughs> hug back. He got me, and I'm like, we're home. We're home. And it was because of the saints in this house and the love, the genuine love for others that we demonstrate that people stay. Let's take it to the world. We have a beautiful thing. It should not just be here on Sunday mornings. It should be wherever we're at. If we're having coffee with each other, if we're having lunch or dinner with each other, let that love guide and govern our lives. Amen? We are growing the kingdom of God by our love because of love. And it's because of the love that we receive. We now reciprocate and give to those that Christ called us to give it to. Have you been loved much by Jesus? Come on. And let's go love much. Let's go love others much. Amen? This is what true love is. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we come before you, and Lord, we just thank you so much for your word, the guidance it gives us. And Lord, we just thank you so much for the freedom and the license and the liberty to love others. We don't even have to have any reason other than you died for them that we can go and share the good news of Jesus Christ with somebody. And Lord, perfect love casts out fear. So no matter where we go into, we go into the situations we go into, knowing that you go before us and with us, and you will guide our words, you will guard us and protect us as we minister to people that we come into contact with. Help us to be fearless in this area, that we will not be ashamed of the gospel that we will boldly proclaim it to those we come into contact with. And consequences, we don't worry about consequences because we trust that you've got us, Lord. And that when we walk in love, when we operate in love, that, that if one door shuts, you're going to open something else for us, Lord. But we, we want to be obedient to the call of love on our life. We're called to share with the world around us. We're called to, to let the world know about a Lord and Savior who in love came to this earth and gave his life so that everybody could be reconciled to him. The Lord wants none to perish, no, not one. And Lord, you've given us this great commission to go in love and to share that news that there's still hope, that no one is too far away, that nobody has done too much. There are so many testaments in this Bible that show people that you shouldn't have saved, but you delivered, Lord. And that is a testimony for us when we beat ourselves up and we feel unworthy for the love. That we were reminded as we get into your word that, man, you do love deeply. You do. You love freely. We can't comprehend the amount of grace that you have, Lord, and the mercy. As your word says that, that grace and mercies are promised to us new every day. So, Lord, help us to, to leave this place full of the joy of the Lord, full of your love, that people would see us and say, ah, there go disciples of Jesus. You can tell that it is so because of their love. Father, let that be a testimony for us. As we honor you and glorify you by the things that we do, that everything that people see in us points to you. Let that be us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Every one of us has unique experiences and life stories because of our relationship with the Lord. It is during communion that we celebrate that relationship and what Jesus has done for us. Communion is a symbolic physical reminder of Jesus' death. The bread represents his body that was beaten for each of us. The juice represents his blood that was poured out for all mankind as a sacrifice, establishing a new covenant between God and his people. Cornerstone Church celebrates an open communion. If you are a visitor today, you are more than welcome to join us. If you believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son, that he died on the cross as payment for your sins, and that his resurrection gives you eternal life. When you are ready, please take the bread and juice from the tables in front of you at the stage. If you are not able to come forward for whatever reason, raise your hand and an usher will bring the bread and juice to you. If you have any questions or would like someone to pray with you, please stay and after service, we would love to meet with you. You are also invited to come to the front of the room to pray or worship at any time during communion and throughout the rest of the service. Please come forward as you're ready.
deserve it all. You deserve it all. With every breath that's in my lungs, my heart cries out to you belongs the glory through every loss or victory my soul will rise to only bring you glory with every breath that's in my lungs my heart cries out to you
bow to idols, I stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, well, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings, I hold fast to what is true. If the cross brings transformation, then I'll be crucified with you. Cause death is just a doorway into resurrection life. If we we'll join you in your sufferings, then I'll join you when you rise. When you return in glory, all the angels and the saints. God, once again, we just thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for the message of love. Father, I thank you for my mother's love. I thank you that you put that love inside of her. That even while I was rebellious as a child, she still loved me through it. Father, we thank you for your love that even while we are yet rebellious in our lives here on this earth, you love us through it. You continue to show us who you are. You continue to reveal to us not only your love for us, but your grace and your mercy that is so undeserved on my part. But because of who you are, Father, you lavishly bestow it upon us. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we thank you. Lord, for those who have maybe finally released something to you this morning, God, be praised. But for those that are struggling this morning still, Father, with guilt or shame or a hidden sin, Father, or maybe an addiction or a hurt that they just haven't been able to let go, Father God, may your love just come and, and melt that away right now. Holy Spirit, do your work inside. Do the mending that needs to happen. Do the building up. Father, I thank you that on a daily basis you choose to walk with me and remind me of who I am in you. Holy Spirit, as we always pray this, would you go before us this week? Would you be alongside of us? Would you be behind us? Would you be inside of us working? giving us the courage to speak love to somebody who's never really felt it before. Father, when it seems like such an easy message to give, yet for some reason, it's still terrifying for so many of us just to be able to step out and talk to somebody about who you are. So Holy Spirit, we ask for that courageousness this week that you would work inside of us. That everything that we do this week would be to glorify the Father. In the name of the Son. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. The church said, amen. Love you guys. Have a good week. Mothers, please grab a beautiful dahlia. Take it with you. Uh, don't leave it out.